Humanity in Crisis will bring to you some of the biggest issues that exist in the world today. Each programme will tackle a different crisis ranging from poverty and conflict zones through to gender equality and child labour. Now, poor health is something we've all experienced at some point in our lives and illness has existed since time immemorial with humans running a constant race against disease, viruses and infections to find treatment and cures. Today, the focus will be on human immunodeficiency virus, better known as HIV, and acquired immunodeficiency syndrome, more commonly known as AIDS. The history of HIV and AIDS is a short one. An estimated 25 million people have died worldwide from AIDS since the first reported cases in 1981, making this one of the deadliest epidemics in recent times. The World Health Organization estimates there are 35.3 million people living with HIV globally, with approximately 3 million being children aged 14 and under. It has affected all regions in the world and people from all walks of life, with the majority of cases occurring in the developing world. The effect of the epidemic is not only apparent on the health of those infected, but also impacts on families, communities and the economic progress and advancement of poorer nations. So what is HIV and what is AIDS? What are the causes and what are the consequences? And what's the future for those living with HIV? These are just some of the questions we'll address in today's program alongside dispelling myths and misconceptions. But first, let's see what the great British public know on this matter. Yes, HIV is a, is a virus and AIDS is the full one. The both diseases that affect your immune system. So, for instance, you can catch HIV, which will then later develop into AIDS. HIV is, I believe, a strain of AIDS. So basically, AIDS is a disease, but HIV is a more specific type of AIDS. Yeah, HIV um, is more like a hereditary illness or condition that people can get, whereas AIDS is a sexual transmitted disease. No. All things are curable. It is curable, I believe, if you treat it within 48 hours using, I'm not sure what the drug's called, but it's a certain antibacterial drug. I'm not sure about that answer, but I would say that it is treatable. I'm not sure about curable. I don't think so. HIV isn't curable, but I think they can get like medication to sort of just help them through it, but it isn't curable. It's apparent from the responses we've received that some of us are still unsure about what HIV and AIDS are, despite there being plenty of information available in the public domain. To get the actual answers to these questions, I caught up with Dr Barry Peters, one of the leading HIV specialists in the UK. HIV infection simply refers to somebody having the virus, even though the majority of people are quite well. AIDS, on the other hand, suggests that the disease is advanced with a damaged immune system and these people are likely to have many infections or problems resulting from HIV. To all intents and purposes, there is no cure. We now have the definition of HIV and AIDS, but what are the common ways in which it's contracted and what are the symptoms? Would a person actually know if they were HIV? Sexual unprotected relationships, relationships. Um, sleeping around without use of protection. Exchange of bodily fluids, so unprotected sex, sharing needles. I would say that would be things like unprotected sex, uh, the use of needles uh, unsafely, and it's basically um, bloods and fluids. Symptoms of HIV. And the HIV sounds HIV positive. I don't know. Um, I really don't know, but I think they say it's it has something to do with coal. If it like um, I'm really not sure. I think it's symptomless. Fatigue, uh, illness, 
Um, I guess I would probably look out for something like a low immune system and loss of weight. Determining whether somebody is HIV can be confusing and not always apparent, especially as Dr Barry Peters explains. The symptoms are very varied, but it's important to recognise that in the early stages, there are no symptoms. Most people with HIV wouldn't know they had it if they weren't tested and have no symptoms at all. And later on, the symptoms are so varied that it is not helpful. Really, if you feel you're at risk, you need to go and be tested. Since the discovery of HIV 30 years ago, many misconceptions have surrounded it. And despite information being readily available, especially in industrialized nations, misunderstandings and myths prevail. Here's a few examples. HIV can be contracted by simple contact with someone affected. The evidence shows that HIV is not spread through simple contacts such as shaking hands, nor can it spread through tears, sweat or saliva. However, HIV can be contracted from infected blood, semen, vaginal fluid or mother's milk. If I am receiving treatment, I cannot spread the HIV virus. When HIV treatments work well, they reduce the virus in the blood to very low levels. However, this does not mean the virus has been completely eliminated, so there still remains the risk of transmission. I can get HIV AIDS from mosquitoes. On the basis of experimental evidence and probability estimates, HIV does not reproduce and does not survive in insects. Therefore, mosquitoes cannot transmit the virus. As Dr. Barry Peters mentioned earlier, the only sure way to know if you have HIV is to get tested. Free tests are available at sexual health clinics, most GP surgeries and clinics run by charities. A new initiative by the Terence Higgins Trust is a HIV postal kit. You can request one via the website and on receipt you swab your mouth, send it back after which you'll get the results. The sooner HIV is detected, the higher the likelihood that treatment will be successful. Now, much research has been carried out over the past few decades and a lot has been learned about the virus, which has led to a transformation in the evolution of treatments. There has been dramatic progress. From the early days, when I was managing people with HIV 20 years ago, there was no effective treatment and people died. Now there are over 20 effective treatments which can halt HIV replication in its tracks. Those treatments can even be combined, as you need at least three different drugs, they can be combined in one pill. So many of our patients are taking just one pill once a day. But a word of caution, even though we have outstanding treatments, which means it's a no-brainer to be checked and to be tested, these treatments can have side effects. You must take them every day. And they're not cost-free, even if we get them from the NHS. There's still a cost attached. HIV has affected regions across the globe, but it's most prevalent in the developing world, with sub-Saharan Africa being the worst affected, followed by South and Southeast Asia. According to the World Health Organization, Ukraine suffers one of the most severe epidemics of HIV AIDS in Europe. In poorer regions of the globe, there's still little or no access to care and medication because of high costs and distribution problems. But with international pressure on big pharmaceutical companies, cheaper generic versions of patented drugs are now being made available. According to UNAIDS, there were more than 700,000 fewer HIV infections in 2011 compared to 2001, and Africa has cut its AIDS-related deaths by a third in the past six years. Betty McConey, CEO of Child Girl Network, an organization that raises awareness on HIV, explains how shifting perceptions achieved this. When it came to our attention that HIV and AIDS was in our communities, people were clearly, clearly not aware what it was. It was a disease associated with immorality uh, and a lot of people got stigmatized. But with coming of age medication, in our communities, people have come to accept it, that it's a disease that, like many others, that are manageable and also treatable. So the attitude towards those who disclose their HIV status as positive is significantly changed. 
Although things are improving incrementally in Africa, there still remains a lot of work to be done to tackle the epidemic, especially in relation to ignorance, stigma and lack of funds for those who need help. Somalia is an example of a country where after two decades of civil war, the health system is in tatters and in need of support. According to local doctors, Somalia needs more funds to raise awareness of HIV AIDS prevention, treatment and curbing stigma. Aisha Noor, 35 years old, is HIV positive and is one of the 230 people who receive the life-prolonging medication from Banadir Hospital every month. She contracted the disease from her late husband and only discovered her status after tests at the hospital. I've been suffering from this disease for three years. I get free medication from the Banadir Hospital, but we do not get any kind of support from the new government. The new government, which took office in September last year, depends on international financing institutions and non-governmental organisations to finance all HIV AIDS programmes in the country. Lul Mohamed, the HIV AIDS programme director at Banadir Hospital, commented on the situation of funding. We request the Global AIDS Fund to increase resources to enable us to roll out awareness campaigns on HIV AIDS. This information is vital because it will help people understand the cause of this disease and how they can prevent themselves from getting infected. Dr. Sakdia Abdi Samad, Director of Health for the Ministry of Public Service and Human Development, called for more assistance for HIV AIDS programs which are struggling to stay afloat. The Somali government doesn't have the capacity to handle the needs of HIV and AIDS positive people due to a lack of funds. We are, however, trying to manage with what we get from the Global AIDS Fund. According to official figures, 1% of the estimated 9 million people in Somalia is HIV positive.